the forthcoming Strategic Defense Review SDR will need to make some hard decisions. There are large funding gaps across the whole defense budget and MRSS is a large, potentially expensive program that is potentially vulnerable to the axe or at least the scoping. There could be cheaper, quicker and better ways of enabling the UK commando force operating concept. Building smaller vessels instead of the larger salt ships to support the core littoral strike mission has procurement benefits as well as potential tactical advantages. They can be built faster, for less money in a wider variety of shipyards. This would allow a more flexible spending profile, making it easier for the MOD to manage its cash flow and, if necessary, build the amphibious fleet in increments as resources become available. More rapid delivery would also reduce the money that will need to be spent to keep aging platforms going, especially RFA Argus. The US Marine Corps has begun to develop what it initially called the light amphibious warship which has now evolved into the landing ship medium. These are far from settled concepts but could provide a pointer for the Royal Navy. The US DOD recently signed a lease for a stern landing vessel SLV designed by the Australian company, Sea Transport Solutions STS. The SLV is 73 meters long, but the LSM requirement for large payload dictates a vessel around 90 meters long. STS considers about 65 meters optimal for amphibious operations in the interests of maximizing beach accessibility and could be the best option for supporting the UK commando force concept. The SLV was first developed 30 years ago to supply remote communities and mining operations in Australia. The SLV can cope with open ocean passage in all weathers, deliver supplies rapidly over the beach and have low operating costs. Construction time is typically just 18 months although this might increase slightly with military customization. The idea of reversing a landing craft onto a beach is counterintuitive. At first glance, it appears to be a slower, riskier way of getting ashore, but customers who have bought an SLV have never gone back to a conventional bow landing craft. Landing craft that reverse onto a beach is not a new idea, but it has proven very hard to get the propulsion, steering gear and hull shape right. STS has perfected this type of vessel over 30 years of development. Traditional landing ship tank LST with bow ramps have attempted to achieve some of the advantages of an SLV by reducing their hydrodynamic drag either with a ramp running over the top of the bow or by shaping the bow doors. LST designs developed in the Soviet era can theoretically achieve 18 knots 2 knots faster than the SLV. However, 18 knots could only be achieved in calm conditions. Whereas the 65 meters SLV will sustain 16 knots with a 300 ton payload and 15 knots with 600 tons in sea state 5, which is more relevant to military operations. More speed also demands a longer, leaner hull form, with consequences for maneuverability and survivability. With a bow landing vessel, you can have either good hydrodynamics or good ramp geometry but not both. Free from the constraints imposed by having to accommodate a ramp at the bow, the SLV can use the most efficient shape, including a bulbous bow. Most landing ships can't beach with their full cargo load. The US Army's successful Frank Besson class LSV can beach with 45% of their cargo capacity which is fairly typical. The 600 tons quoted for the 65 meters military SLV is its actual beaching load. In the SLV accommodation is provided for the crew and an embarked troop platoon sized force, but the vessel can be supplied with plumbing and power connections for additional containerized accommodation modules for up to a company group. SLVs can land directly onto the beach which is much quicker than the slowly docking down LPD. Although they have to come about to land stern first, they turn very tightly for their size. Unloading the vessel as quickly as possible is usually a tactical imperative. The SLV ramp is also twice as wide as similarly sized bow landing craft, with no height restrictions allowing large loads to be delivered. Low drag bow landing vessels can't do this, as the ramp pivot point needs to be about 6 feet higher than in an SLV, which leads to unfavorable ramp angles. Getting off the beach is usually harder than getting onto it. It can take a lot of thrust to overcome the suction between the hull and the bottom. During the beaching conventional landing ships, with their propulsion going astern, are poor at converting power to thrust. The SLV's propulsion, conversely, is working at its most efficient. No commercial SLV has become stuck on a beach in 30 years of operation. Conventional LST designs require saltwater ballast tanks and pumps to trim the vessel. 
The SLV requires very little trimming and does it by moving fuel, reducing the maintenance requirement. The military variant of the SLV is toughened to cope with rocky shorelines as well as sandy beaches. The plating is highly bash resistant with protection for the propellers and steering. In fjords where the gradient is too steep to drop kedge anchors, powerful bow thrusters can be used to keep the vessel in position. Alternatively, the SLV could be fitted with launch and recovery systems for LCVP's small landing craft or raiding craft. The military SLV can flex between roles by utilizing TEU container-based modular systems. It can therefore be configured to operate as a mothership, with various methods of launch and recovery for smaller platforms, either crewed or uncrewed. The command and control requirements of MRSS have not yet been defined in detail but will need space, weight, power, cooling and antenna farms. There is already capacity in the existing superstructure to command company group level operations. A larger staff could either use containerized spaces or a dedicated command SLV with a longer superstructure could be built. In general, the SLV is well suited to being adapted for use as a floating main operating base or forward operating base. The standard SLV design can be fitted with a flight deck aft of the superstructure. Designed for UAS, with the option of a near full-length flight deck for helicopters, at a trade-off in cargo deck flexibility. Aviation capability is not the strength of the SLV, with its lack of a hangar. However, a helicopter carrying variant could be developed with an aircraft lift and vehicle deck converted to a hangar. Despite its commercial origins, survivability is one of the SLV's greatest advantages. There is no large undivided internal space such as in an LST or Bay class or LPD. The military version uses diesel-electric propulsion, with four widely separated diesel generators below the waterline for survivability. Each is cross-connected to all four DC motors, each driving its own shaft. This provides excellent system separation, redundancy, resilience and watertight subdivision. It is intended that void spaces will be filled with a buoyant non-inflammable foam recently developed at Strathclyde University. If the Royal Navy were to abandon the conventional LPD-type solution for MRSS and develop something based on the SLV it would have several advantages. Having more numerous vessels creates a tactical advantage by distributing assets and the SLV can quickly deliver large payloads to the beach. From a procurement perspective, smaller vessels are easier and quicker to build and with a more evenly spread cost profile.